Okay, so it was a lot easier for me to make a video than try to write out a large post. Some of you have been asking questions as far as the gallbladder and the surgery. Now, with my case, I had to have it removed. It was going bad. I was I was running the risk of if it became gangrene, you know, I could die, all those things. So I, I had no choice. Um, there are people who have gallbladder issues. Now, if you've had, you know, the the test done where it tells you that your gallbladder is still functioning at a normal rate and you are able to change your diet and you know maintain it so it doesn't get progressively worse then that's great but there are people who need to get it out so I posted a video it was like five months after well it's been another month or so and over the past three weeks I was dealing with severe gallbladder attacks and I don't have a gallbladder anymore um, I was getting severe migraines, um, I was real sick, real weak again, and I was starting to learn more and more about the food allergies. Now, um, I don't know if the last video I posted anybody watched about the food allergies. I submitted, um, it's Everly Well, and it's, you can, it's like a hundred and, I think I paid like a hundred and eighty. Um, they have like a discount like 15% so now's the time I highly recommend jumping on it um, they told like I got the food sensitivities back and so I learned a lot of things I was eating that were causing me issues so do your research about your IgE and your IgG your IgG are the ones that are slowly gonna make your your body sick over time and that's what you know can cause your gallbladder issues as well as all these these food allergies and sensitivities that just are like constantly fighting a battle in your body um, I kind of really overdid it for the holidays and I jumped right back into eating what I wanted, what I wanted, however I wanted kind of thing. Eating late at night was a huge issue. Um, once I stopped eating past seven and I let my body have like six to like six hours between um, eating a meal and going to bed, I really noticed a huge difference. Um, in the morning, like I didn't have like the acid in my lungs, I didn't feel like crap or you know, whatever. And then I've been eating um, greasy food, like I kind of tried it out. Um, I had like eggs and meat and, and I was just severe like gallbladder pain in my back and I was getting severely constipated and no matter what I did, my food wasn't breaking down. Um, so I jumped right back into some weird pains and problems that I hadn't had uh, because when I first got it out I felt great but then I think I really overdid it by just doing you know the whole eat what I want when I want thing. And then I was really good for a month or so, and then all of a sudden I started to get real sick again. Um, and I was doing gluten-free for a while and I felt really good. I wasn't eating a lot of meat, that's great. Um, um, i trying to think of everything I, I need to cover. So I guess with that, um, I mean, like I said, if you get the test done and it's telling you that you're you're still in functioning range, change your diet. Warm lemon water will help push out stones, but be careful because, um, you know, if, if the, li the liver makes the stones. So if you are completely cleansing your liver, if you have a lot of stones in your liver, it's going to push into your gallbladder and you can run the risk of, you know, the bile ducts being blocked and things of that nature. Um, there are different things that can help break it down. I think the lemon water will help dissolve them, but um, it's like an overtime thing, not like a huge detox all at once. Um, but the greasy foods, fatty foods, I mean, there's so many different things. I mean, you really just need to get, like I said, the blood allergy testing is the only accurate way, but that'll help tell you what your body can and cannot eat, and that will help prevent any more organs from going bad. So, all right, thanks. Bye.